who would like to pray today anyone just please uh, unmute yourself and pray Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we welcome, we pray in Jesus' name. We welcome the presence of Holy Spirit. We want your guidance, Lord, to lead us in our lives, in our daily lives, Lord. We want this hour, what we're going to spend in your presence, Lord, whatever we are going to learn, Lord, about prayer and intercession, Lord, whatever we are going to continue from our textbooks, our chapters, Lord, whatever ma'am is going to teach us, Lord, let it be in our heart and let your will be done in us, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven lord we pray that we need your wisdom lord the wisdom you gave to solomon lord we need your guidance lord the wisdom you gave to all your apostles lord that we will be used more than they were used in their time lord we want to be used we need to be used as a weapon for your kingdom lord we lord protect us provide us lord Thank you for all the time you have given us. Thank you for all the blessing you have given us. We pray for APC Bible College. We pray for all of our student body, Lord. Whatever we are go we will be learning in this three years, Lord. Let it be used in our lifetime, Lord, so that we can be used as a vessel and we use we can be made a soldier for your kingdom, Lord. We will be used for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sitkinu, for leading us in prayer today. Uh, we will continue with that. A teaching here on travailing okay so we've been learning uh, about a deeper level of intercession and we saw how the bible associates um, or we see uh, travailing generally associated with the birthing process you know, when we engage deeply and intensely with god um, we are actually you know uh, seeing god create things in the spiritual realm and that is released into our lives so travailing has to do with praying earnestly it has to do with um intensely praying okay we also uh, see terms like groaning associated with travailing and agonizing agonizing associated with travailing so we've seen uh, that jesus right jesus in his own prayer life there were uh, different instances we touched on last week and jesus intensely prayed okay, intensely prayed he uh, travailed uh, particularly in the in the garden of gethsemane he travailed before the lord so engaging in prayer in a deep way okay uh, and, and that is a part of all of our lives now it can be uh, that you know we we do that when we're going through some phases where uh, we really need the help of the holy spirit right to engage in prayer you know so you know it, it's really hard to explain but i'm sure you're, you're understanding it's beyond the normal prayer that we are doing okay so we're trusting for god for a breakthrough we are crying out to god and we come to a place of agonizing okay agonizing or groaning or like deeply seeking god for that breakthrough or it can be the next season of our lives right or or a ministry that god wants to birth through our lives so whatever it is there is a place of engaging deeply in our prayers which goes beyond our listed kinds of prayer that that we talked about so uh divya asked in the last class is this only an intercession excuse me or can this also be something that one uses in their own personal lives yeah one per, one could use this in their personal life as well uh, and this can be applicable as an intercession too okay uh, so we engage in this form of a prayer and paul talks about how uh, he gives birth to spiritual children and he labors intensely with them and laboring for spiritual work has to do with uh, engaging in spiritual activity one such activity is deep prayer 
or travailing in prayer and paul says also i travail right i travail so that i can uh, give birth to you in christ jesus so uh, we must realize that you know we too can do this with the power of the spirit uh, and you know the birthing process the birthing process in many ways is associated with this kind of travailing so i just uh, gave you uh, an example and said how jesus said that rivers of living water shall flow out of our belly uh, you know the belly also refers to is also referred to as the womb so from where are from where is the power of god going to flow from the womb okay and with the womb right is is associated the birthing process as well so when we travail in prayer it's like from the depths from our belly from our womb we are able to release the purposes of god uh, even on mount carmel when uh, elijah prayed we note that he travailed he deeply travailed it was already the promise of god that it is going to rain but he went seven times he prayed he waited on the lord before that small um, cloud uh, like the hand of a man appeared okay so he engaged in prayer and he was literally battling it out in deep prayer uh, and that is known as travail so as god's people you know when we understand that engaging in this form of prayer will release god's purposes will uh, bring the fulfillment of the word that god has already promised to us it's very encouraging okay it's very encouraging so we too can uh, begin to make use of this kind of a deep prayer now this is again not something that you know you can say okay i'm going to travel in prayer and then travel it it may not happen that way you know as you take the the help the aid of the holy spirit remember we said that the holy spirit is the spirit of grace and supplication so he helps us he helps us maybe at some points in our prayer we need to engage in this form of travailing so the holy spirit will empower us in those phases and you know we begin to pray we begin to deeply cry out to god okay uh, and and we begin to ask god and especially when it comes to the matter of salvation of souls okay god can burden people uh with that need so when we study about revivals in in church history you will see that there were a lot of people who engaged in this form of prayer i told you i, I mentioned to you last time uh, it was not a revival but the ministry of uh, charles finney where he had father nash you know going out and praying and uh, he would see results in the ministry but when you look at revival revivals in church history i am reminded of uh, what's this person's name the welsh revival just hold on Ah uh, yeah, Evan Roberts. Yeah, Evan Roberts. So Evan Roberts, uh, you know, God puts a burden on his heart to pray for uh, Wales, and you know, the kind of prayer that he engages in is a form of a deep kind of prayer. You know, and he begins with a prayer of repentance, and then you know, he calls out for this this uh, movement of prayer, and people begin to join him. Uh, actually, it starts with. a young girl praying okay and from there the spirit of god begins to work in everybody and people all just start crying out to god they all just uh, you know start seeking the lord uh, in a very intense form of prayer and evan roberts asked god that you know he he wanted to see uh, i forget the exact numbers actually uh, that maybe something like 1 million people or something uh, within a span of time he wants to see those many people saved and then the revival happened and when the revival happened hundreds and thousands of people were being drawn into the kingdom of god in you know moments in days in weeks in months okay and uh, historians would tell you that whatever target he set before the lord and said okay god these many uh, thousand people should come 
to know you they should be saved in this span of time it actually happened but how did the uh, bringing in of souls into the kingdom of god take place through the prayers through the prayers of the saints so the welsh revival uh, a lot of people you know actually began to pray uh, and uh, engage in deep prayer and the spirit did that work in the hearts of the people you know it was not something you know man can't create it you know i can't say today okay come let's all travel in prayer we need the help of the holy spirit to burden our hearts in such a way you know to give us that that empowering to engage in deep prayer and as we engage in deep prayer there are results okay and people are able to uh, uh, see the work of the holy spirit so we can see especially in the area of souls being saved intercession in this manner really uh, has been seen to produce fruit i gave you only one example of welsh revival but if you take and if you study uh, and in fact in your notes there is a, a, a line written that for you to go back and refer to uh, the apc publication called revivals visitations and moves of god you will find this at uh, apcwo.org/books go there pdf version of revivals visitations and moves of god you can read about different revivals you'll notice that prayer and deep prayer was a part of so many revivals okay so many revivals um uh, uh, we i think we will touch on it later also so if i'm not wrong there's one alexander akimetus where you had people who were just he, he let people only to wait in the presence of god only to to pray like day and night they uh, i think they began to be known as people in the caves or something like that because that much of time they would spend in the caves just praying just seeking after the lord just you know going after the presence of god so they were engaging in this form of prayer and then you see the work of god being released upon that land so especially when we talk about souls being saved you know travelling in prayer uh, is something that we have observed okay uh, impacting nations and today you know we we know that god has burdened the hearts of uh, many different people there are prayer movements in in our own country okay there are groups of people who engage in deep prayer okay but we trust that you know all this it will only increase as the days go by uh, so that we can see the release of god what god wants to do in our land uh, so travelling in prayer especially for souls uh, is very very important for us to understand so what really happens what really happens when we engage with the holy spirit in this way right so the holy spirit burdens our hearts and we are praying you know we we are calling out to the lord and i told you as god's people you know when when um, uh the church travels she will give birth okay when the church travels she will give birth how is the birth possible we know that the holy spirit is the birthing agent now if you recall in the book of genesis in the beginning when god created uh, the heavens and the earth you also had the spirit of god brooding over or hovering over the waters so what is this term hovering you know hovering is a reproductive term where uh, like basically it a uh, hen hovers over her uh, her her uh, eggs and then you find that the chicks sort of come out so hovering is a reproductive term so when we engage with the holy spirit the holy spirit is the birthing agent right and he puts the burden in our hearts he puts the impression in our hearts he calls us to pray for you know something the birthing of a ministry or uh, the the winning of souls in our land or you know uh, something else god opening up new doors for us in our lives when we engage with the holy spirit you know as he puts these things into our hearts what's happening we are cooperating with that birthing process okay we are cooperating with the birthing process and as god's people 
no we are also the church can also be looked at as the womb of god but the holy spirit comes he hovers he puts his impressions you know he he uh, uh, burdens us with the things that we must be praying for and as we do that you know the church is engaging the holy spirit is engaging and then you see the birth process happening right the results the breakthroughs the uh, uh, people coming into the kingdom or whatever whatever we have been praying for all those things start to happen so it's a really beautiful form of prayer that we can engage in but it has to be through the power of the holy spirit Okay. Now, since we have been saying constantly that uh, travailing is seeking God intensely, groaning, you know, uh, agonizing, weeping before the Lord, does it mean that travailing is always a very loud process? Not necessarily. No, we might be praying. We might be praying, sort of quietly. right under our breath but it's about a spiritual grip it's about a spiritual intensity which we have right so we are going after god with a spiritual intensity it need not necessarily be loudly you know praying uh, putting out our voice in such a way that others can hear us now it's possible that we pray loudly we pray with weeping okay we pray agonizing but it's not travailing okay however the opposite is also true we are not being loud and yet in the spirit we are experiencing an intensity in prayer so let me just pause here for a bit okay uh, i don't know whether this is uh, very new to all of us but i just want to know if anyone has engaged in intense prayer of this kind and seen something happen in your lives so if you could share that i think that will that will be good we can proceed from there just feel comfortable you can share your experience Okay, no one can i can i share something yes yes uh, isaac please go ahead okay is it was not me or it's not me that was engaged uh, in the intense prayer like you are talking eh first and foremost i uh, grew up in a catholic background so i was not okay. trained to pray so much but um at present like i always say my wife has a ministry and she is a very good prayer warrior i can call her uh some years back she was building a new church which will now occupy it's a big church according to our own standard is like 40 feet by 70 feet and then the church went up to wall height and there came a time for us as a church to roof the church and we need a uh, zinc ci sheet we call it corrugated iron sheet but the cost of the zinc we as a church we are not able to provide that money at that time because the ministry do not have that sort of money even in our account 
But my wife, being a prayer warrior and believing in prayer, always said, God will provide. And it went on, went on. To cut long matter short, there came a time she had a relationship with a ministry in America. One of our members in the church has a brother who is serving in a ministry in America. And as God will have it, they provided the fund for us to buy all the aluminum things, about 11 or 12 bundles. So I give the grace to God. I think God answers prayer, and that I saw with my own eyes. Because we all as a church were not able to provide our money at that time to roof the church. But she believed and she continued to pray. And with all of us, I think God answered our prayer. God bless you. God bless us all. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, so that's uh, an example of... Um, receiving an answer uh, to a believing prayer and also intercession that Isaac's wife engaged in and you know God made things happen so thank you thank you Isaac um, now even as you listen to the testimonies of uh, various people and especially ministers of God you now as I think there are so many pastors who have shared how they prayed so intensely and generally before the the launch of the, the the work of god you know maybe the planting of the church individually or as a team you know, usually church planting uh, there, there's a team they go out with the team and they all begin to pray they all begin to seek the lord and there is a season of that of engaging in prayer okay engaging in intense prayer and there are so I've heard so many such testimonies. After that, they begin the work of they begin to see the work of God unfold. Okay, because they have engaged with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yes, there is an element of spiritual warfare in it, but there's also this element of deep uh, intercession for souls. There's a you know deep groaning or uh, seeking after God for his purposes to be released, for the doors to be opened. Okay, So that again, uh, yes, Isaac shared how when, when uh, his wife engaged in prayer, God released the provision which they required. Uh, we also see, you know, particularly in the instance of church planting, a lot of such examples where people engaged in deep prayer, travailing, and then you know, lo and behold, the ministry starts to uh, flourish. And for us as, as uh, onlookers, we think, wow, hey, these guys have done a great job. But what has happened in the background? People have engaged in the spiritual realm. Now, when we study church history also, like uh, interestingly, in the last class, we, we had some question about, you know, civil disobedience and civil rights and all. So we went back to the times of uh, uh, Martin Luther King, okay, where, uh, where you know, that there was that whole movement, right, about justice and uh, equality for people of all races. When you dig back in history, I have I have seen some documentaries where, yes, the civil rights movement and all happened, but there was there was the the angle somebody shared from uh, like a Christian perspective, and you know they shared about how many mothers and grandmothers and uh, you know uh, so many women were actually engaging in intense prayer. They were engaging in you know. Uh, going after God and saying, God, you know, we want to see justice. We want to see better opportunities for our children. So, um, uh, I mean, there, there are there are stories like in a deep way, in an intense way, uh, they were all praying. They were all praying. And then, yeah, God brought a reformation in the, in the system, the social system in that land. But these are all 
kind of the the underlying things that cause change to take place right so yes there is the preaching of god's word which can bring about a change reformation city transformation but there is a role that travailing in prayer can uh, travailing in prayer has you know which cannot be replaced okay so it's very valuable individually even individually if we want to take time to just pray right pray for ourselves for our ministry for our land and say god you burden us holy spirit you hover you come you move right you you brood over my spirit you put things in my spirit i'll catch those things i will pray you know and i will uh, see your purposes release we too can engage in this kind of a travailing prayer and there there are many uh, many revivals many uh, social transformations many things that have happened in history that people church planting uh, you know church launches ministries that if you just research little bit you will figure out that somebody was praying somebody was engaging with the holy spirit in a deep and an intense way and god caused things to shift god caused things to move okay so that is the the power of this travailing prayer uh, and uh, be open to the way in which god leads us in our time of prayer and in our time of intercession so here in our notes we have the last section here about the life of jacob okay so jacob uh we know that when he was returning back to meet his family he was going to meet his brother esau he was very fearful because he had deceived his his brother and he had taken his uh, um, blessing and he ran away right so he thought that when he meets his brother he's going to lose his life and face consequences for what he has done so he was really really scared but as he was preparing on this journey to meet his brother there was once that he was alone he had sent you know his his uh, family and uh, livestock servants everybody ahead of him and he was alone in genesis 32 we we see that there there is an incident that took place and in that incident he was wrestling with a heavenly being okay wrestling with god uh, and during that wrestle you know jacob does something he says he gets a hold on on uh, god and he says i will not leave you till you bless me okay so he gets a very strong hold uh, on god uh, and he demands he demands for a blessing right so even when when the heavenly being like god is wanting to let go of jacob he is not letting go of god okay and then yes god responds to that and he leaves behind a blessing for jacob so what do we see here what do we see here from this wrestling incident you know uh, there are passages in the bible that bless jacob that talk about what he ended up receiving because of this attitude that he carried okay in hosea 12 uh, uh, verses 3 to 6 i will read it for you it says he took his brother by the heel in the womb and in his strength he struggled with god yes he struggled with the angel and prevailed he wept and sought favor from him he found him in bethel and there he spoke to us that is the lord god of hosts the lord is his memorable name so you by the help of your god return observe mercy and justice and wait on your god continually so this is what jacob did okay so he wept he sought favor from god now obadiah 117 this is all in your notes page 50 okay obadiah 117 it says but on mount zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness the house of jacob shall possess their possessions so god is talking about blessings he's talking about deliverance he's talking about holiness and where is this going to be he says <coughs> excuse me the house of jacob god could have used any other person's name right from one of the descendants of abraham he could have picked anybody and said 
there will be deliverance there will be holiness the house of abraham or the house of someone else but in obadiah it says the house of jacob will possess their possessions so the blessings of god will be given to jacob because excuse me he sought for it okay uh, just a moment please excuse me yeah he sought for it he asked god for it remember what did he do we just said he struggled with god with his strength whatever strength he had he struggled with god what kind of struggle is this getting a grip on god and saying i'm not going to let you go is it possible any human being you get a grip on god and you say i won't let you go will it work god is definitely stronger but we are not talking about physical strength here we are talking about getting a spiritual grip on god which jacob got okay that is what impressed god and that is why in obadiah we are told that the that jacob will possess his possessions because the others you know uh, uh, in comparison to jacob during that time they let things pass by easily like esau he just his spiritual blessing his spiritual birthright very easily he let it go he said okay if i don't want it you give me lentil soup no problem but god was not happy with that kind of an attitude right but jacob had an attitude which said give me my spiritual blessing i won't leave you god till you bless me i will not leave you it's a spiritual grip so spiritual blessing has to do with uh, <clears throat> you know whatever the cross has to offer it's in the word it's in the cross i want it lord in my life spiritual blessing has to do with purpose it has to do with destiny it has to do with anointing it has to do with grace you know it has to do with empowering so many things so basically what jacob was saying is whatever is there god that i can get as a blessing you please bless me i am not going to leave you my spiritual blessing i want it so he wept we see in hosea he wept with whatever strength he had he struggled with god and he prevailed he sought favor from god okay and god was very impressed with this kind of an attitude and a desire where for jacob god was everything and god's blessing was everything and we are told that you know jacob is the one who receives he will possess the possessions and also you know we 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 have uh, um yeah the scriptures also say that jacob <coughs> excuse me was named later as israel okay so israel what is the meaning of that israel means a prince a prince with god jacob is deceiver but because of his grip on god you know that deep intense grip on god what is god doing god is giving him stature or god is positioning in positioning him higher you are not a deceiver anymore jacob you are a prince before my eyes you are a prince so a better stature better position with god but how did jacob manage this to get god's favor blessings possessions deliverance holiness and stature where god is looking favorably favorably upon jacob it's because of his intensity his spiritual intensity and his spiritual grip on god so as we're talking about prevailing you know this goes together when we pray when we weep like jacob okay when we agonize before god like jacob for the spiritual things which god himself has said yes you know i'm going to do these things elijah what did he pray for god had already told him is going to rain he said god let it rain and he kept telling his servant you go look you go look so based on the word of god we get a grip on god and we say god i will not leave you till you bless me okay and from the life of jacob it's very clear 
God was very impressed. Okay, and God even uh, later on the prophet Hosea mentions it's Jacob who receives the possessions. Okay, so that's a little bit more about travailing and about spiritual grip and spiritual intensity. Any any thoughts? Any comments before we proceed on to the next chapter? Yeah, does it make some sense for many of us? It's new. This whole prevailing thing, but does it make any sense now? Yeah, great, great, wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, yeah, just begin to seek the Lord uh, and begin to ask Him. to lay burdens on your heart right to put impressions on your heart and then you can engage in deep prayer i'm reminded you know so many things are coming to my mind now uh, uh, there is uh, something called as a prayer mountain in uh, seoul korea okay this is uh, uh, through the ministry of uh, uh, pastor david yonggi cho and on this mountain you know people say that even as they pass by the mountain they will only hear like cries and uh, people calling out uh, people weeping and all so basically uh, a a prayer uh, like a prayer schedule has been established okay on that mountain so people go there only for prayer uh, and for many many years prayer is going on for what reason one of the primary reasons is for like spiritual breakthrough in the land in the city in the country okay uh, and and people go there they dedicate hours of their time days of their time uh, i don't know even weeks they just stay on the mountain and they engage in prayer deep prayer deep prayer for their land okay and uh, i told you earlier when we talked about dr cho how he said that uh, you know through through prayer he built the ministry right and he also says through prayer he has seen the gospel you know spreading so fast across his own city and he says without prayer that would not have been possible there are people teams of people communities of people engaging in intense prayer for the land and at the same time you know if you if you read some of his books he also says how he himself spends many many hours in prayer every day okay so uh, <clears throat> yeah so engaging with god engaging not just superficially but in a deep way and when the lord begins to burden you with things to do with you know salvation of souls our destiny our ministry open doors you get a grip on god you say god till i see what you have told me i am not leaving you right so then comes that place like how we said no jacob wrestled so you're getting into prayer but you're there you're wrestling right in the spirit you're just engaging 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 with god and then you see the release or the birthing of what god had promised okay so that's how this whole travailing thing works and uh, for for us to understand more i think you can refer to that book revivals uh, and it will be really beneficial you'll get a hold of uh, this new concept for us okay is that okay class are you are you fine with that Yes, ma'am. Yeah, great, great. Okay, excellent, excellent. So, if there are no more questions, we can move on. I'll just pause for a for a moment in case somebody wants to say something or ask something.
Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, do refer to uh, stories from history, and that will clarify uh, travailing for us much more. Now, moving on to the next chapter here, which is ministering through prayer. Okay, ministering through prayer is, uh, you know, primarily intercession, right? Because you're praying, you're going to God on behalf of somebody. So how do we do that? And what, what is it that we see in the Bible about praying? Uh, so in the time in uh, the time when you know Paul was uh, engaged in his missionary journeys, we we know that he went through uh, certain regions, and for three years he spent time in Ephesus. Okay, and Ephesus was a place where he was able to connect with people from different parts, uh, you know, or different regions. So a lot of people came there to be trained by Paul because three years. He spent a lot of time imparting the word of God to the people. Uh, and at that time, there were some young men who came and trained under him. So there was Philemon. And there was also a person called Epaphras. Okay? Now, Epaphras was basically from Colossae, a city called Colossae, which is 100 miles east of Ephesus. Now, when Ep when uh, Epaphras went back to Colossae after the equipping time, he went and uh, established the church in Colossae. So it was not Paul. Like Paul never really went there to uh, plant this church. But the church was planted by Epaphras. Okay. Uh, so about this person called Epaphras, you know, Paul gives a really, uh, like, like he, uh, when he writes to the the. Colossian church, you know, he he greets and he kind of gives him a, a, a good, uh, what do you call it? Like a good rec a recommendation or he credits him or commends him. He he just says that, wow, you know, this this person, uh, he's, he's a good person and he has labored for you. Okay. So he commends him in, in his epistle. So uh, Paul writes his epistle to the Colossian church when he is imprisoned in Rome, okay, towards the end of his life. So some passages here from Colossians, Colossians 4, verses 12 and 13, he talks about Epaphras and he says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a born servant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So at this point, mind you, Epaphras had come to stay with Paul when he was, uh, you know, imprisoned in Rome. So uh, Epaphras also joined him. That's why he says, born servant of Christ. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he also refers to him as like a fellow prisoner, fellow servant, because Epaphras was with him when Paul was in Rome. So he, he describes Epaphras in this way. And he says, for I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you and those who are in Laodicea and those in Herapolis. Okay, and let's also read one more uh, scripture here. This is from Colossians 1 7, where he says, As you also learn from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. So, what was the kind of ministry in which Epaphras was engaged? You know, we learn that the primary thing that Epaphras did for the Colossian church. And also he says, you know, Hierapolis and Laodicea, there are uh, sort of uh, about 10 to 12 miles away from Colossae, you have these other places. But this gentleman, he would pray, he would engage in prayer ministry for Colossae as well as for Hierapolis and Laodicea. And what does Paul, uh, you know, say about Epaphras, you know, he calls him a bond servant of Christ. You know, usually when you read the epistles, you have this term bond servant for apostles. But Paul is using that term for an intercessor. Okay, so he's really valuing the ministry of Epaphras, which is the ministry of intercession. So is intercession a ministry which, you know, okay, fine, you can't, uh, you can't lead worship or you can't lead, uh, uh, you can't share the word of God. Okay, come on, you do intercession. Does it work like that? 
No. You look at the value that Paul places on the life of this minister, Epaphras. He says, he is a bond servant of Christ. Similar to what apostles do, preaching the word, teaching the word, right? Doing all those so-called notable things. He equates somebody who is in intercessory ministry with the apostle. So are intercessors valuable? Is their ministry valuable? Yes, very, very valuable. OK, we saw that Paul said he's laboring fervently. You know, this laboring in ministry, again, somebody who is in the teaching ministry or preaching ministry, we might only say that they are laboring. Why do we labor? You know, Paul said, you know, I, I labor fervently so that Christ may be formed in you. And now he's saying a man who is praying is also laboring fervently. So can Christ be formed in someone through the intercession uh, offered by uh, an individual? Of course, that's the reason Paul says about Epaphras. He says he's laboring fervently. So similar to what people in other offices do, here is the intercessory minister or, or you know, an intercessor of God. Their prayers matter. And through the prayers of an intercessor, what is God doing? God is extending his work. God is, uh, you know, completing his work in the lives of believers and in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So basically, I'm just trying to make the point that intercession, it's not a secondary ministry. It's not, a, um, you know, like peripheral thing. Okay, yeah, intercession, good, no problem. It's not like that. It is very much uh, one of the central ministries that anyone could be engaged in okay and paul really values this individual called epaphras so what we'll do is we'll stop right now and uh, we will continue we will learn a little more about epaphras in the next class and also try to understand what how to engage in the right way in intercessory ministry now we will specifically touch on those who are called for intercession now can everybody intercede yes we all can intercede but there are some people like epaphras who are graced additionally you know with with that ability to intercede for others so we are calling them as intercessors so how to be an effective intercessor okay or how to uh, do intercession in the right way we will talk about all those things in the next class. All right. So, yeah, uh, time is already up. Uh, and I'm just quickly looking at the question here by Ribika in the chat. Uh, she says, Daniel doing a prayer three times a day. So we see in Daniel 10, 13, that prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. What does it mean, ma'am? Please explain this. Okay. So, Ribika, this, uh, this means that there is spiritual hindrance okay so even when god answered daniel's prayer and we we very clearly in like uh, this passage we see that the answer was given immediately for uh, for daniel's prayer but because of the interference of demonic forces it was not released into the natural realm okay so the prince of Persia, these are all principalities. We will talk about it later. Uh, over territories, over regions, over nations, when you look at uh, the kingdom of darkness or Satan and his demons, generally you have principalities which are kind of taking charge over a, uh, or in this case, Persia. Over Persia, there was a demon principality. That demon principality did not allow the answer to Daniel's prayer to come through. But what released the prayer? Fervent and earnest prayer that Daniel engaged for 21 days. So uh, that is why in the last uh, chapter which we did, 
persistence in prayer we said sometimes we may not see the results but we should keep praying why because it's spiritual warfare our prayer is working for us maybe there is some hindrance like this uh, from the demonic realm but there will be a breakthrough there will be a release and we will see the answers to that prayer okay so rebecca does it does it help you that explanation thank you ma'am all right ma'am it's clear yes yes ma'am all right all right ma'am okay 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 sure sure okay all right yes thank you thank you so much rebecca thank you for that okay so we are going to uh, close off today and uh, i will request somebody to please pray again ruben haven't heard your voice in a while are you okay to pray ruben can you hear me okay not sure so okay, who else is comfortable okay i think i'll just leave it open to anybody who wants to pray yeah let's pray oh john okay yes john please father we thank you for uh, teaching us today from your word regarding intercession specifically Lord, we pray that we would be able to cultivate this habit in our personal walk with you, and we pray, O oh God, that we would be able to um, intercede and ask you for mighty things to happen in our city, in our locality, in our community, in our church, in our personal life. Lord Jesus, dear Lord, we pray that uh, you would give that spirit of supplication. You would give that spirit of um, uh, your prayer to to be with us to. lead us in the right direction of god help each one of us to be partners with you um to obtain your mercies and your from your kingdom of oh god we thank you for pastor nancy for helping us to share the word and enriching us with your word lord um till the time we meet again let your presence be with us oh god in jesus most precious name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you John and thank you each one uh, I, i pray that you have a really blessed weekend okay and we will connect once again next week so uh, take care god bless you bye bye for now